On 18th May 2016, the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Government of India, set up a committee, a review committee for rationalization and optimization of the functioning of sector skill councils. The committee was headed by Shri Shada Prasad, former Director General, Directorate General of Employment and Training, Ministry of Labor and Employment, Government of India. I had the good fortune of working with the committee and slogging for many hours, days, nights for the committee and its report. We submitted a report somewhere on the end of 2016 and uh, I think around January 2017, uh, early days. I wanted to present the summary of the key recommendations that we made to the government. The first recommendation that we had was every developed country has got a very well defined national vocational and education system. However, in India, we have not been able to put in place a sound national vocational and training system, which is aspirational and provides every youth an opportunity to opt for a career in a vocational field. Therefore, the first recommendation is that the government should create a sound national vocational and education training system, which provides the following. Number one, every child irrespective of his caste, creed, religion, gender, region or economic status should at least get 10 years of schooling. So that are 3 hours reading, writing and arithmetic make the basic foundation on which higher vocational education and training system could be successfully built upon. Number 2. At the end of secondary school level, the children should be sensitized about the dignity of labor world of work and career options. But vocational education and training should start only after 10 years of schooling, which is the case in most of the developed world. Point 3. Every child should be given an option to go for vocational education and training as is permitted to go to humanities, science, commerce, technical education or medical education streams. The government should promote setting up of required number of vocational education and training colleges where options should be available to a child to choose any of the sectors of his choice for training. The vocational education and training colleges should run vocational courses but along with students should also be taught two academic subjects such as language and any other subject from humanities or science or commerce depending upon his future growth option as is currently mandated for Vocational training graduates of ITIs after 10 years of schooling to get equivalence with 12th standard. The vocational education training colleges should run certificate, diploma, advanced diploma and degree level courses. This was the first recommendation. The second recommendation of the committee was the national vocational education and training system can only succeed when the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship and the Ministry of HRD work closely together, keeping in mind the national goal of making India the skills capital of the world. The Ministry of HRD should conduct vocational education and training courses at 10 plus 2 level and align the standards with the National Skills Qualification Framework. They should set up higher vocational education and training colleges and universities to ensure vertical mobility of the VET stream pass-outs with regular trainers, professors, well-equipped state-of-the-art classrooms, workshop tools, equipment and machineries in consultation with the industry. However, if they feel otherwise, MSD should set up a national vocational university which should conduct research, train the trainers, professors for the higher vocational education and training system and become affiliated universities for all the vocational education and training colleges. Recommendation number three. There are no uniform VET standards in the country and therefore the skills imparted to trainees are also not uniform. Most of the ministries, departments and organizations, state governments and vocational training institutions run short-term vocational training programs of 150 to 300 hours which do not make the youth employable or make the skill needs of the industry. It has therefore been recommended to create a credible and dynamic National Labor Market Information System, National Occupational Standards, National Competency Standards, 
national accreditation standards, national assessment standards, and national certification standards, and align them with the International Standards Classification of Occupation 2008. The present QP NOS are very narrow and do not meet the skill needs of the industry and therefore should be reviewed and new national competency standards developed by SSCs, NSDA, DGE in close cooperation with the industry on the basis of ISCO 2008. Recommendation number four. There are 17 ministries in addition to the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship who are doing skill development. However, nobody owns the National Vocational Education Training Standard. It has been recommended that the Ministry of Skill Development should become the owner of all national VT standards and must be accountable for skilling of youth with the objective of meeting the exact skill needs of the industry and providing employment to the youth. Recommendation number five, nine ministries which does not have any training infrastructure of their own, may be asked to discontinue VT and transfer their budget and staff to MSD. However, eight other ministries who have got their own training infrastructure may continue with the condition that they will be required to align the course curricula and national standards to meet the skill needs of the sectoral industries. The, the training should also be brought under the purview of national assessment and certification system to ensure best quality of training and uniform certificate. Many of these ministries have not been allocated VET under the Allocation of Business Rules 1961. If they want to continue with skill development, they should get the Allocation of Business Rules amended accordingly. Recommendation number six, Ministry of HRD has been allocated Secondary Education Vocational Guidance under the Allocation of Business Rules 1961. However, they have been doing vocationalization of secondary education and not vocational guidance. It is recommended that they should do vocational guidance at a secondary level and get vocational education and training allocated to them so that they can carry out vocational education and training courses at senior secondary and higher levels. Recommendation number seven, in-plant apprenticeship training should be made an integral part of vocational education and training system for all trainees, as is the case in Germany and many other countries. Recommendation number eight, there should be a close interface of the VET system with the industry. The SSEs must become the vibrant institutions of interface between the government, VET system and the youth. The employers must own, finance and drive them in order to discharge their responsibilities efficiently and effectively. Recommendation number nine. The commitment of the industry towards training happens only when they contribute and are closely involved. It has therefore been recommended that a reimbursable industry contribution RIC of about 2% of the annual wage bill should be collected from all small, medium and large enterprises employing 10 or more persons. The employer themselves will manage this fund through the sector skill councils. They can reimburse the cost of training incurred on meeting their skill needs depending upon the annual training plan and performance. Recommendation number 10. In order to ramp up the existing training capacity of the national VET system to about 10 million per annum, all existing diploma colleges and ITI should be renamed as VETCs and the capacity should be enhanced to an average of about 500 trainees per annum running about 10 trades which include 3-4 engineering trades and 6-7 services sector trades along with 2 academic subjects. In addition, about 3,600 new vocational education training colleges may be set up in government, government-aided, private and public-private partnership with the financial support of National Skill Development Corporation. Recommendation number 11. In order to ensure best quality training, the national VT standards should be aligned to international standards. The vocational training institution should be accredited by independent professional bodies. A system of annual surveillance and oversight should be introduced and assessment and certification done by 
an independent national board of assessment and certification. Recommendation number 12. Short term courses being run under various schemes at present are not able to meet the twin objectives of meeting the exact skill needs of employers and providing decent opportunities of livelihood for youth at decent wages. It has been recommended that these short term courses should be discontinued and only long term competency based courses should be run to acquire national competency standard certificate which will only entitle a person to employment in the country or abroad and will be able to meet the exact skill needs of the industry. Recommendation number 13. The soft skills and life skills are equally important for employment and therefore communication skills, computer and digital literacy, quality management tools, occupational safety and health, English proficiency, entrepreneurial skills and basic financial literacy, literacy should be a part of the curriculum. Recommendation number 14. A sound framework for development of skills to meet the needs of the unorganized sector and large school dropouts should be evolved. It has been recommended that 50,000 vocational education training schools should be set up by the government government aided, private sector, public-private partnership, local bodies and non-government organizations in a manner that one VTS vocational education training school is available in a cluster of 10 to 12 villages. These schools will be financially supported by National Skill Development Corporation. Recommendation number 15. A sound framework for recognition of prior learning should be evolved in which the informally acquired skills of a person will be assessed in terms of his level in the NSQF, the gaps identified, training provided to meet these gaps and then assessed by a national board to award the national competency skills certificate so that he is fully trained and able to command higher wages. Recommendation number 16. There is a huge shortage of qualified trainers. In order to create a pool of qualified trainers, a framework for training of trainers should be evolved in which entry qualifications subject to be taught, duration, pedagogy skills should all be included. The existing institutions for training of trainers should run full capacity and more such institutions should be set up. They should also have at least six months industry experience and should be paid more than their counterparts in the industry so that the industry experts are attracted towards training. Recommendation number 17. A training should be provided counseling, guidance and employment services so that they can access job market successfully. In order to accomplish this, Directorate General of Employment DGE, now under the Ministry of Labour and Employment should be brought under Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. All employment exchanges in the country should be converted into state-of-the-art counseling, guidance and employment facilitation centers armed with modern technological tools. The sector skill councils and the Directorate General of Employment should work closely together to facilitate counseling, guidance and placement to the skills person. Recommendation number 18. We must also create institutional mechanism to visualize and prepare people with skills required for future jobs, which are expected to be largely technology driven and innovative. Apex High Tech Institute AHI, has been recommended to be assigned this role of developing future skills and national, national skills research development should work closely with AHI. Recommendation number 19. Many of the proposed steps will require legislative support in order to operationalize them. It has therefore been recommended that the Apprenticeship Act 1961 and the Employment Exchanges Compulsory Notification of Vacancies Act 1959 should be repealed and new Vocational Education and Training Act should be reenacted. Recommendation number 20. 
The Sector Skills Councils provide the interface between employers, trade unions, governments and various components of vocational education and training system. Global experience shows that the concept of Sector Skills Councils has been successful only where the involvement of the employers has been intense. It has therefore been recommended that the Sector Skills Council should be owned, funded and driven by the sectoral employers and not by the industry associations. Recommendation number 21. In reviewing the existing qualification packs, national occupational standards and developing new competency standards, sector skill councils, national skill development agency, directorate general of employment should involve professional institutes like the CSTRI Kolkata, PSSCIV Bhopal and content development from Nini, from Nimi, Chennai. Recommendation number 22. As National Skill Development Agency has been mandated to anchor and operationalize National Skills Qualification Framework, it should also be assigned the role of National Skill Qualification Authority, NSQA, and CSTRI, NIMI, and PSSCIV should be brought under its functional control. Recommendation number 23. The state governments are conducting training through government and private ITIs and large number of other training institutions. There is always the need and support of SSCs but the state governments feel handicapped since the sector skill councils are located either in Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai or Bangalore. The sector skill councils therefore should set up the offices in the states to take care of the skill needs, particularly in agriculture allied and MSME clusters. Recommendation number 24. The sector skill councils should be mandated to create a sectoral labor market information system, create a database of employers in the sector, develop a web portal to collect data on the skill needs on a real-time basis, aggregate and share it with all concerned so that training institution could align their efforts according to employers' needs. The sector skill council should also maintain an inventory of skilled manpower to support the employers on a real-time basis. Recommendation number 25. At present, the sector skill councils have a limited interface with the training providers, except those conducting short-term training programs under Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana or Deen Dhyal Upadhyay Gramin Kaushal Yojana or vocational schools under Rashtriya Madhyamik Siksha Yojana or those organizations which are conducting short-term training courses under QP NOSES developed by them. But their role is strategic and therefore they should also have close interface with the Industrial Training Institute, ITIs, Polytechnics, schools, colleges, technical institutions, universities and other vocational training institutions and persuade them to incorporate national standards in the course curriculum so that the national vocational education training system becomes aligned to the exact skill needs of employers and is demand responsive. Recommendation number 26. Many cases of serious conflict of interest have come to the notice which are quite disturbing. It has therefore been recommended that the government should review the role and functioning of National Skill Development Corporation comprehensively with a reference to its memorandum of association and create a strong oversight mechanism to ensure that such conflict of interest do not arise in the future. Recommendation number 27. The National Skill Development Corporation had not followed any standard criteria for creation of sector skill councils, which not only increased the number of sector skill councils, but also created overlapping jurisdictions. The committee followed National Industrial Classification 2008 for the purpose of classification of all economic activities into 21 sectors based on the employment and GDP contribution in descending order and rationalized the 40 SSCs into 21. This classification is based on and is compatible with the National Standard Industrial Classification ISIC which makes the SSCs internationally comparable. Accordingly, the domain area of each sector skill council has been rationalized on the basis of NIC 
and ISIC. Recommendation number 28. In order to implement creation of new SSCs on the basis of NIC 2008, all the existing sector skill councils should be dissolved. New sector skill councils should be created under section 25, now section 8 of the Companies Act 2008-13. All funds to the old SSCs transferred to the new SSCs. Governing Council of New SSCs should have representation from all division old constituent entities. The new sector skill councils should function like an organic whole giving importance to all constituent entities. All sectoral industries should become the member of sector skill councils. The member of the governing council should be democratically elected by all members of the sector skill council. The members of the governing council should elect the chairman in a democratic manner and a term of the chairman and the members of the governing council should be for a period of three years. The CEO must be identified by an independent selection procedure and the person should be an outstanding professional having at least 20 years of experience of working in that particular industry. In order to provide professionalism, chief operating officers may represent the constituting entities. A representative of National Skill Development Agency a representative for administrative ministry concerned, representatives of two state governments and representatives of two central trade unions should be represented on the sector skill council. The members of the sector skill council should be employers and not the representative of industry associations. In order to discharge the responsibility of SSC effectively, heads of standards and quality, industry interface and labor market information system government, VET interface, finance and unorganized sector should be appointed from amongst the experts and professionals having at least 15 years of experience in their respective fields. Recommendation number 29. The National Industrial Classification Code 2008 has been mapped with the National Classification of Occupation 2015 which is compatible to International Standards of Classification of Occupation, Revision 4. Sector Skill Councils and NSDA should now develop national occupation standards and national competency standards on the basis of NCO and ISCO and provide the best quality training to a person so that he is not only competent to work in India but also elsewhere in the world. Current National Classification of Occupation 2015 is mapped correctly with International Standard of Classification of Occupation Division 4 up to four digits but the last four digits are on the basis of current qualification packs and nurses which makes it very narrow and therefore it has been suggested that ISCO should be used for preparing the national competency standards. Recommendation number 30. A central advisory board on skill development should be created in which ministers of all central ministries departments doing skill development, the ministers of all state governments dealing with skill development and head of all regulatory bodies dealing with different aspects of skill development should be members to effectively coordinate the efforts of skill development seamlessly across the country. Recommendation number 31. The Directorate General of Employment has been collecting labor market information for the last 50 years and has a domain expertise and infrastructure at the district, state and central level, which should be leveraged to create a sound national labor market information system. DGE under the Ministry of Labor and Employment therefore should be brought under MSD and the name of the ministry should be changed to Ministry of Skill Development and Employment because entrepreneurship is primarily for self-employment which is covered under employment. Recommendation number 32 The role of DGT insofar as it concerns policy formulation on vocational training, laying down standards and norms, development and revision of course curricula should be mainstreamed with National Skill Development Agency. 
as NSDA does not have the expertise to carry out this work at present, DGT may form the nucleus for this purpose and become an integral part of the national vocational education training system. Recommendation number 33. The National Council for Vocational Training has been the national assessment and certification body for the last 60 years and has a domain expertise, manpower and brand name. Therefore, it should form the nucleus of the proposed National Board for Assessment and Certification. Recommendation number 34. National Skill Development Agency mainly performs the regulatory function such as the implementation of National Skills Qualification Framework, development of labor market information system, approval of norms and standards and therefore it should be renamed as National Skills Development Authority. The National Skill Development Agency is presently poorly staffed with about a dozen and a half short term consultants. Befitting the new status of NSDA, an organizational structure should be created and professionals with experience of industry and academia must be recruited on a regular basis and provided vertical mobility. Recommendation number 35. The National Skill Development Agency is mainly a regulatory body. However, it has also been mandated to raise extra budgetary resources for skill development from various agencies such as international bodies, multilateral agencies and private sector. It compromises with the regulatory role and therefore should be withdrawn from them. Recommendation number 36. The governance structure of National Skill Development Fund is flawed. Board of Trustees of National Skill Development Fund consists of three members, Secretary, Department of Economic Affairs, Secretary, Planning Commission, and Chairman, National Skill Development Corporation. NSDF is required to oversee the work of National Skill Development Corporation. The governance structure of National Skill Development Fund compromises its supervisory role and therefore Chairman National Skill Development Corporation should be excluded and instead Chairman National Skill Development Agency should be included as member. Recommendation number 37. The National Skill Development Corporation is a public-private partnership with 51% equity of the private sector. It is essentially a private sector body and therefore not competent to undertake regulatory functions. It has not been able to discharge the responsibilities given it to it for setting up sector skill councils. There have been a lot of instances of serious conflict of interest and unethical practices. The work of setting up sector skill councils should therefore be transferred to the regulator National Skill Development Agency and their memorandum of association should be amended accordingly. Recommendation number 38. According to its original mandate, National Skill Development Corporation should mobilize resources for skill development from industry, financial institutions, multilateral and bilateral external agencies, private equity providers, and ministries, departments of central government and state governments. Recommendation number 39. The resources so mobilized by National Skill Development Corporation should be used to support private sector, set up large number of vocational education training colleges and vocational education training schools to run long-term competency-based courses of certificate, diploma and degree level according to the exact requirement of the industry. Recommendation number 40. Most of the government industrial training institutes have been modernized in the last 8-9 years but the private industrial training institutes are still in bad shape. The National Skill Development Corporation should help modernize, expand and diversify the courses in these private industrial training institutes so that they can meet the exact skill needs of the industry after being converted into vocational education and training colleges. Recommendation number 41. As National Skill Development Corporation is a funding company in the private sector in the nature of non-banking financial company NBFC, it should therefore function under the relevant regulations applicable to NBFCs. 
Recommendation number 42. The National Skill Development Corporation is a private sector led body and does not come under any regulatory system of the government. However, they are using almost 100% of the government funds without accountability. A strong oversight mechanism should be created for monitoring the outcomes as a result of the funds provided by the government. Recommendation number 43. The National Skills Qualification Committee is required to approve setting up of SSCs, norms and standards, but it does not have the adequate resources to discharge its functions effectively. National Skills Qualification Committee therefore should be strengthened and industry domain experts should be included in it. There should be regular support of professional industry experts available in processing the proposals being put up for the consideration of National Skills Qualification Committee. Recommendation number 44. The Qualification Pact's National Occupation Standards developed earlier were not user-friendly and were overly complicated, geared with technicalities, interposed with many abbreviations and jargons, and with more than 25 pages in each Qualification Pact. The proposed new National Competency Standards should be simple and easy to use, not just by the experts, but by all other users and trainees as well. Recommendation number 45. The qualification packs, national occupation standards being used in schools under vocational education scheme have not been approved by National Skills Qualification Committee. The objective of providing skills to students is to meet the skill needs of the employers and provide employment to the youth and therefore Ministry of HRD should use the same national standards as approved by National Skills Qualification Committee. Recommendation number 46. The sector skill councils have been making standards on one hand and also testing and certifying based on the same standards on the other. This amounts to validating your own product yourself. Such a process raises the question of credibility of the whole process. It has been recommended that the standards making and testing and certification be kept at arm's length and assigned to separate bodies. National competency standards should be developed by National Skill Development Agency and the Sector Skill Councils, training done by the vocational training institutions and assessment by the proposed National Board for Assessment and Certification. Recommendation number 47. The level descriptors given in the NSQF lack clarity and objectivity. It is necessary to make them amply clear so that a trainee and trainer can easily understand. Moreover, everybody understands certificates, diplomas, degrees, etc. And therefore, we should start with them, convert the courses as per level descriptors, assign credits and establish comparability with the existing titles. NSQA has a big role to play in it for, for which it needs to be staffed and qualified with experts. Recommendation number 48 Para 72 of the National Skills Qualification Framework Notification dated 27th December 2013 says that however, it is not the case that every qualification will or should have all the characteristics set out in the level descriptors. This should be deleted as it has potential for misuse. Recommendation number 49. The implementation schedule of NSQF as prescribed in para 14.4 in notification dated 27 December 2013 will require modification as a review process of the present qualification packs, national occupation standards, creation of new national competency standards and setting number of, and strengthening of NSQ, NSDA will take some time. Recommendation number 50. The credit and transfer system has not been developed so far. It requires expertise of multi-disciplinary professionals from education, 
vocational education and training, technical education, higher education, etc. After assigning the role of NSQA to NSDA, it should be manned by the above experts who should develop grade system, grade transfer system, bridge courses, etc. to fulfill the purpose of creating NSQF. Recommendation number 51. The National Skills Qualification Framework is quite technical and even the so-called professionals do not understand it properly and therefore there should be sensitization and communication campaign with the help of seminars, workshops, etc. to educate all concerned about the nuances of the aspect. Recommendation number 52 At the current stage of a demographic dividend, more investment for skills that aligns with sectoral demand is needed. Overwhelming global evidence for a structured method of industry contribution is seen to be dynamic and rewards actions by the industry. Accordingly, a reimbursable industry contribution along with matching grants from the government is provided to ensure skill development is adequately financed and owned by the employers and the government. The government and the employers work together seamlessly to skill youth, provide them opportunities for decent livelihood, meet the exact skill needs of the employers and over a period of time make India a developed country and a skills capital of the world. A multidisciplinary expert group may be constituted by the government to work out the details, implementation strategy and drafting a new law on the subject. So these are the 52 recommendations that we put out in the report. Uh, I think the government of India is working on them. Some of them have been implemented and more or less the more we implement these recommendations, the more we will be closer to our goal, uh, at least walking on the, towards the path of making India the skill capital of the world. Thank you so much and uh, if you have any feedback, please let me know. We will try and work closely together to ensure that the country becomes the skill capital of the world.